Might have picked up, I've got a bit of an accent, folks, yes. You might have also picked up, I've got an Irish accent, well done, that's two for two, thank you for playing. Yeah. We were all thinking it. Obviously the bit that you have missed, fact, folks, is the fact that I'm also a raging homosexual. Yeah. No. I appreciate that's come as a bit of a shock to you all. Potentially devastating for a few of you. <laughs> and obviously the straight men in the audience are going, fuck, that shit could happen to anybody. <laughs> but uh, yeah, growing up in Catholic Ireland was tough, you know. I used to have an odd interaction with the girl just to throw them off the scent. And please don't... <laughs> But uh, please don't, please don't judge me. I'm not here promoting a lifestyle. I'm merely describing more of a Bear Grylls type scenario. I'm not proud of the fact that I use these women to hide my sexuality. But on the flip side, did that, they did it by shares of the stock that was never going to rise. But uh, I find sexuality confusing. Yeah, like you've got your pansexuals, your non-binary, and your gender fluid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, folks, as I was saying, I find sexuality confusing. Like you've got your pansexuals, your non binary, and your gender fluid. I thought gender fluid was just something you left on the sheets when you were done. <laughs> But I think it's good that we've got gay marriage. Obviously, I'm disappointed that we had to have this silly plebiscite. But there is a certain irony that gay marriage got legitimized through the back door, so to speak. <laughs> but uh, folks, I've actually experienced homophobia from a very young age, yeah. All started with my mom back in Ireland, yeah. She was relentless every day. She used to stand on that back porch, she'd be like, Mark, don't forget to come home straight from school now. <laughs> Some of you will get that joke on the way home. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my partner gets very sentimental after sex. Very sentimental. Like we're lying there after doing the act and he looked me in the face and he said, wow, you've come a long way. <laughs> but uh, I've been trying to eat healthier, like uh, eat kind of raw, kind of unprocessed food. So hard to get recipes. Ended up bringing a lesbian friend of mine. Because she's a fan of Bush Tucker. <laughs> you can have that one for free. It's a bit of a dad joke, yeah. Or as we like to call them in the gay community, yeah, who's your daddy joke? <laughs> Had to go and see my doctor this week. I said, I need more Valium. He said, why do you need Valium? I said, well, I get fucking nervous. He said, why did you get nervous? I said, well, the fucking sudden realization I was going to go to Valium didn't help. That's where I got that show. He said, but what seems to be the problem? I said, the problem is I get tense, I get nervous, I get these fucking palpitations. He's like, have you any idea what causes that? I said, man, I don't mean to be fucking rude, but my understanding was you were the one with the fucking medical degree. Like, I just rock up with a couple of symptoms, you bring a fucking diagnosis. So I've got into the fucking baker's next door. Then he turns to write the script and I said, now, could you increase the dosage from two milligram to 10 milligram? He's like, why would I do that? I said, well, let's start with the fucking stress of this intensive interrogation for starters. But uh, I'll tell you, folks, something I get frustrated with is when healthcare professionals continue to maintain a normal conversation while they're examining my private parts. Yeah, when I'm stretched out naked, positioned like a fucking Christmas turkey on a kitchen bench. Yeah, and some stranger comes barging through those curtains with two fingers extended, heavily lubricated. Like, at that very moment, I'm in no humor to discuss Shane Warren's fucking cricketing ladies in here, I tell you that much. But, uh, I'll be honest, folks, a group of people, I hate when people pretend they're more qualified than they actually are. Like, I'll give you an example. When I go to my pharmacy and the person on the front desk suddenly starts to pretend like, you know, six weeks ago she was at Coles, now all of a sudden she's got 17 years of fucking pharmacy experience, you know? Like when she says to me, Mr. O'Connell, why do you need the antihistamine? I'm like, oh fuck, is that what we're going? You're the pharmacist. 
Now I used to get angry, now I just fucking play along. Yeah. I like to lean in, create a bit, a bit of a virtual private booth between me and her. After all, this isn't a fucking episode of bar embarrassing bodies. I'm not going to be sharing my private intimate medical problems with a shop full of fucking people at the pharmacist. Yeah. And then once she's locked into my virtual private booth, then I'm happy to share and say, yeah, if I don't get that antihistamine, what happens? I get a little bit of a, a rash when I drink full fat milk, and she's like, ooh, oh, really? sensitive, are we? I'm like, yeah. And then what happens if I don't get the antihistamine? It spreads out and gets real into my groin, real itchy and flaky, and then she's like, oh, I'm like, well, you fucking started it. Yeah. I'm just getting so good at this, I go to different pharmacies to practice this routine. Another problem area, folks, you'll find is your GP receptionist, yeah? Because what I've, what I've noticed is when I arrive at my GP receptionist, she won't even lift her head up to say hello. No. Won't even acknowledge me. She's like, take a seat. Someone will see you soon. But I've got a fucking solution for her. Oh, yeah. When I come back from that fucking toilet with all my samples and my swabs, I like to take them out of the brown paper bag and line them up on the counter for her. Oh, yeah. And then I step her through the different samples. So I'll say, this is my urine sample. It's a little bit cloudy. Yeah. This is my throat swab, and this is my rectal. A visual check, and you'll be able to see the difference. And what happens next is absolutely amazing, folks. Yeah, because you know what happens next? She fucking lifts her head, her neck problem secured. Suddenly, I, I get the attention I seek and deserve. Now I'm freelancing as a fucking chiropractor. Yeah. I mean, some people might say it's a new age healer. I'm achieving these sort of results. I'm not even fucking laying a hand on her, you know? But uh, I went to uh, I went to hot yoga this week. Anyone been to hot yoga? Oh fucking hell! The minute I walk into that room, I started to regret. Suddenly, I started to experience levels of intimacy that I no longer desired or fucking required. Seriously, and I must keep like I don't even know why I went why I went to hot yoga. And then I thought, you know what? I'm sick of going to the gym, sharing a room with random sweaty people. I thought, what would this experience be like with the fucking heat turned up? Yeah. But I need to give you a bit of advice, folks. Oh, yeah. If you're going to hot yoga, two things. Bring your own yoga mat, because the sound and spells of two yoga mats separating after they've been left to dry overnight will fucking linger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the second most important rule in hot yoga is never let your eye wander in the middle of a yoga pose because you will fucking see things that seriously you'll need cognitive behavioral therapy to fucking resol resolve them yeah the brochure said that hot yoga would improve my mood re relieve my stress improve my flexibility fuck no what i actually what i actually experienced was a group of people in a very confined space detoxing their bodily fluids onto the floor to the sound of fucking wave music. <laughs> but, um, Fitbits, everybody's wearing the Fitbits, aren't they? They become popular. Yeah. I have, I'm not, I don't mean to be rude, but I have noticed there's an awful lot of overweight people wearing Fitbits, which is interesting. I mean, it's interesting in the sense that I'm not sure why you need an expensive bit of kit to tell you that you're not fucking exercising enough. No, but seriously, you can go to Kmart, you can get yourself a full-length mirror at Kmart, that can give you all the information you need. No, no, seriously, it'll fucking graph it for you. Yeah, you'll get the, all the information you need. But the other thing with the Fitbits, have you noticed people put them on their wrists? I mean, that's just fucking stupid. Because that's the skinniest part of your body. It's going to give you a false sense of security that your diet's on track. My advice, strap those fuckers onto your thighs. Oh, yeah. Give you a far better indication of how things are tracking. Yeah. And when your diet starts to slip, and that Fitbit's rubbing against your inner thigh, and then finally fucking breaks, launches itself across the room and takes up his time. I out to be a fucking timely reminder that your gym membership is due for a new. Yeah. And the other thing, folks, is there's absolutely no science, absolutely no science that strapping things to your body promotes weight loss. No. Lesbians will tell you that. That's a bit of a slow burn. Folks, um, dating apps. Can we talk about the dating apps? They've got a lot to answer for the dating apps, haven't they? No, seriously, you know, like, I, and I'm not here to criticize the dating apps because I think, I think the concept is good. Why go out when you can order in? No, no, but seriously, it's good. I mean, the irony you're ordering in to eat them out, but no, seriously. 
No, no, but like what I what I'm saying about the dating apps is I think we just we just need a new feature. Just one feature would make all the difference. A review feature. Oh yeah. Seriously, that would be a game changer because I can guarantee it. We'd get a better product specification. We'd get less false advertising. And then I can avoid those fucking awkward situations when they arrive at my door and I'm thinking, this is not what I ordered. <laughs> no, no. This isn't even from the same restaurant. You know what I mean? And the thing is, I don't think we need to be nasty. We don't need to be nasty. We can be subtle with our reviews. Like, I'll give you some examples. Jack's a nice guy. It's just that gym fit means different things to different people. Yeah. And when he talks about his swimmer's body, it's more of a historical reference. Yeah. No, Fred, Fred's a lovely guy. When you scroll through his Insta photographs and his Facebook, You'll find, you'll find evidence that he had hair and teeth at some point. Yeah. And then there's Hayden. Hayden, super sweet guy, claims to be a carpenter, but given a sloppy approach to measuring his own cock, I wouldn't let him anywhere near your kitchen covers. Because there will be fucking gaps. But, uh, but folks, uh, I, have, I have been noticing a very strange phenomenon lately. Yeah, yeah, I've been no when I turn on, when I turn on the gay app Grindr, I see people with straight acting in their profile. I thought, what is going on here? We've got straight acting? No, I thought, you know, seriously, if you've downloaded Grindr, you've lost the right to use straight acting. And then I thought, maybe it's just straight men coming in looking for fashion advice, makeup tips, <laughs> styling options for troll cushions. I wasn't sure. But then again, you know, maybe they're just looking to widen their circle of friends. But seriously, if you've downloaded Grindr, there's only one circle that you're looking to widen. <laughs> Sorry, you know. These are visually challenging jokes. But folks, but folks the, the question I pose, though, would we change our behavior if we knew that we're getting reviewed? Would you suddenly rock up to people's houses and the water and mints on the bedside locker? You know, maybe some chocolates and some flowers at the end of the bed? I don't know. Well, I know the gays. Oh yeah, we'd take it next level. Oh yeah, we'd have a concierge service. Good evening, James, we'll see you now. He's upstairs in the master bedroom on all fours, wearing a full leather head mask. With his bottom presented like the floral arrangement in the foyer of a five-star hotel. And the bit I like about that joke is that every straight man in the audience, they don't want that fucking image anywhere near their brains. They're like, no, no, but it's too late. It's already in their brains, wandering around looking for a home. Yeah, and they're like, no, there's no room in the inn. It's too late, I'm already in. But, uh, but folks, the other thing about the other thing about the dating apps is they have changed dating. Like, firstly, my KPIs have gone through the roof. Productivity, efficiency, off the fucking chart. Like, my turnaround time for Roots gone from four hours down to 15 minutes. It's fucking, it's just mind blowing. But, you know, because previously I'd have to get, you know, I'd have to get ready, put on an outfit, go to a bar, look interested in someone, get them interested in me, ply them with alcohol, get them home. And even then, you're not guaranteed a good fucking outcome. Oh, no. Because they can take off their clothes. They could be naked in that bedroom. And you're like, Jesus. I don't mean to be rude. And I know it's cold outside. But fucking please tell me that's a grower. <laughs> But now it's so different. Now it's so different. Because now I just send them a text and say, hey, listen, front door's open, lights will be out, bedroom second door on the left, I'll be naked on the bed, go for your life, yeah? But then I've had to start sending a second text, right? Which says, hey, when you get into that bedroom, the lights will be out, if you hear growling, that's not me. No, no. That's my little Jack Russell that I had to lock in the en suite. Because if he gets out, he gets super friendly. Yeah. And I'm trying to avoid a repeat of a very awkward situation I had recently. Where the lights were out and I was mid-session with a guy and he said to me, whispers in my ear, in the dark, it's amazing that you can do the same thing at both ends at the same time. <laughs> And I was like, fuck, that's a timely reminder that I need to get the latch fixed on that dog's fucking kennel. 
Um, folks, I'm going to leave you on this little bit. Um, grow, as I said, growing up in Canton and Garland was, was tough. Like, when I was, like, this was back in the back in the 70s. Like, I was so far in the closet back then, I needed fucking GPS to get in and out of the closet. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't have GPS. I had to rely on my raging teenage hormones to navigate that part of my life. And I think all the men in the room will agree, if you're using your cock as a navigational tool, you don't always get the best outcome, you know? Like, how many times have you woke up in a stranger's apartment and you've looked over and go, fuck, I need to make better life choices. <laughs>